Hi everybody, I have a project for you today that is, this is an example of it. It is a vase with three feet on it and a built-in flower frog. So when you're doing your flower arranging, you can just use the different holes to kind of make a nice bouquet. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this all in one piece in the wheel uh, using a folding technique to create the foot and we'll have to come back later to see how to poke the holes in the top, but this was originally made this way. Um, so that's today's project, flower frog vase on tripod feet, made all in one piece on the wheel. Um, so here goes, I've got about two pounds of clay here. I am on a bat, which is gonna let me just, when I'm done, set it aside, allow it to reach leather hard without having to mess with it. So I'm gonna center it up. And we're going to be starting with a cylinder. The base of the cylinder will be the eventual top of the vase where we're going to poke those holes to make the flower frog. So you want to make sure it's centered really accurately and you want to make sure that you open to a nice uniform quarter inch bottom thickness. So I will stop before I think I'm there and use my needle tool to gauge that thickness in the center. And I am still at about a half an inch, so I've got a little bit farther to go. Check again. And this time nailed it right on a quarter inch. So now I want to open with a nice flat bottom and create a distinct corner where the vertical wall meets the horizontal floor of the pot. And a little trick that I've been doing lately um, is sticking my right thumb against the wheel head or the bat if you're on a bat and trying to keep the shape of my hand consistent as I pull back. And that thumb basically acts like a fence on a table saw to keep everything the same distance. Um, just a little depth gauge. And then I can come in there and compress everything. I want to make sure that that corner is really tight so I don't have a lot of extra weight at the top of my vase. Doesn't really matter. No sense in getting worked up about the wall thickness here. We're not trying to make something that's very, very light. It's actually an advantage for a vase to have a little meat to it. Uh, so there's my floor. I've compressed it. And hopefully it's a nice uniform thickness. You will be able to tell because you're going to be perforating it with holes to make that flower frog all the way through. So good to get it right. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull my walls up and I'm just going to go for a nice vertical cylinder. Squeezing it up. I don't have to leave extra thickness like I would to close a form in a, in a collaring sense because we're going to be folding this close to create the tripod foot. So I just want a uniform wall thickness um, and I don't necessarily have to leave more material up at the top. Squeezing that clay at the base and then drawing it up. I'll let that flare a little bit on me and that's okay. I'm just going to collar it back in. I find that these look best when they're just started from a straight cylinder, but you can experiment uh, for yourself with making them a little bit more bulbous, making them maybe flare out so you've got a, a, a broader base. But I like the way it looks when it's just a straight cylinder. Dry it out. Um, and I'm gonna go in just to make sure that I haven't left material at the very bottom. One trick that I like for making mugs and other cylinder forms is on my third pull, which is my last pull, I will apply pressure a little bit more aggressively from the inside of the wall instead of always trying to squeeze from the outside. And that helps me establish a nice corner down there and it lets me get a little bit of that weight up. And I didn't feel like there was a lot there to, to worry about, but that's a good tip in general for cylinder-based forms. Okay, so again, what's against the wheel now is gonna be the top of the pot. So I don't wanna just leave some raggedy edge up there. I wanna take my wood knife 
and trim away any excess clay so that I end up with kind of a nice finished top. I'm sure I'll still need to take my thumb and kind of smooth that edge a little bit, but um, I want to get myself as close as possible. I certainly don't want to have to trim material away later. So I'm going to trim it now with my wood knife. The key to this is hold it so that the knife is um, blade back towards your elbow. The thumb locks it into your hand like so. There's the blade. And I'm going to just brace myself and come in at three o'clock and just slice the excess clay straight down to the wheel head. When I hit metal, or in this case plastic, I'm going to back out. And now I've separated that ring of swoopy clay that the roundness of my finger creates. Um, and it's separated from the main cylinder. And now I'm going to separate it from the wheel with the needle tool. Just coming up underneath. And then I can stop the wheel, split that ring, and just peel it off all in one neat piece. I'm not scraping material away and having things get stuck back. It's just one, one little worm of clay that comes off. Okay, so basically I've got a cylinder here, not super exciting. Uh, now's the time to come in with some ribs and I want to just clean it up. I don't, I don't feel opposed to throwing rings, but sometimes they can be a little bit busy when the glaze gets on there and I just wanna kinda clean it up. So I've got a metal rib in my right hand. I've got one of these Cheryl Mud Tool uh, medium soft ribs, kidney shape in my left hand. And I'm just gonna press toward uh, each rib toward the other with it held about 45 degrees to the pot. And that removes all this slurry and compresses the wall and just makes it a little stronger and a little bit more um, happy about what's about to happen to it, which is this origami fold that it's gonna get. One more pass just to make sure it's really degooed. And I'm not going to worry too much about this um, top edge. It's going to get all folded together. So I'm not going to chamois it or do anything particular. Um, I'm not going to worry about softening the edges or anything like that. Now, this is going to be a seam. All those pieces are going to come together. So I do want to take a second before I fold it up and get my scratcher tool out. And I'm going to just roughen that seam up. So you can do this with a needle tool. I really prefer these, it's called a feather texture brush from Kemper. It's um, handy, it's just got multiple little needles. You can also make your own from a pack of sewing needles um, and just kind of embed them in a, a handle of your choice. My first one was duct tape and, and popsicle sticks or something ridiculous like that. But if you work with polymer clay, you can make them out of that, Sculpey will work. So that inside corner where it's going to get folded together is now scored so that it'll hopefully make a better seam. I'm going to take two seconds, and this is important. Anytime you're altering a pot, don't go in there with the goopy hands you were throwing with. Take a second, get a big car wash sponge, and just get that goop off your hands. When you transfer all that to your pot, it just looks sloppy and unprofessional, and it's an easy one. It doesn't take years of practice to remember to clean your hands off. Okay, so here's the exciting part. We're going to take this and we're going to fold it together. It's going to start out looking like a triangle. And it's going to go to a clover and eventually it's going to make kind of a Mercedes Benz uh, 120 degree angles between the three feet. Always looking for an opportunity to think about geometry in my pottery. So I am finding three equal spots around the circle. My thumb's on one and I've got a finger on each of the other equally spaced spots. Is it perfect? It's as good as I can figure out right now. And I'm going to start squeezing until it looks pretty much triangular. It's going to spring back a little bit. So um, I start there and then I turn it. And if it still looks symmetrical there and it looks symmetrical there, I'm on the right track. If there's a little asymmetry, I'll start to to kind of correct as I go inward. I'm shooting for the centers of each of these sides to meet in the center at the same height. And if they all come together at the same height, it's gonna make a nice seam and three even feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pressing it in. 
I do like to sort of change my perspective as I go. Now they're starting to touch and they are lining up at the same height. So that's a good thing. I haven't squeezed my feet closed yet. I want to first focus on getting the center to close as much as possible. Once I get to here, there's about an eighth of an inch hole in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and take my fingers and I'm going to think of them almost like, um, I don't know, flat irons. And I'm going to squeeze carefully on the feet to close, but I just want to close. I don't want to thin that foot at all. I'm happy for it to be double the thickness of my cylinder's wall. They kind of look like little clothespins or something now. So I'm just closing that seam, but not thinning and, and pinching the clay. Just enough to close. And then I'll finalize that center seam. Now that almost never is enough. I, I feel like as it shrinks and contracts, it's gonna to try to pull open. And the last thing in the world we want is a base that leaks water out of the bottom, it becomes somewhat useless. So I'm going to take my scratcher tool again, and I'm gonna roughen up that center area. And I kind of sew the seam shut from every different angle, kind of tell the clay, forget that you were once three sides of a circle. You're all together now. You're all on the same team. And not only that, we're gonna bind you together with some extra clay. So I'm gonna take some scrap clay of the same kind that I had sitting on the side of my wheel. And that actually feels like it was trimmings. So that's a little stiff. I want it to be as soft as the surrounding clay. Here's a piece of the, the ring that I cut off the bottom form that into a little bead. So it doesn't take a lot. That's the amount of clay that I've got. And I'm going to press it and turn it and press it and turn it until it forms kind of a little donut without a hole in the middle. It's a little thicker around the edges, a little platelet like so. And I'm going to take my scratcher tool and roughen up the back side of that. And this is going to be like a little binding clip that goes over the juncture between those legs. And so I'm going to try to place it as carefully in the center as I can. And then before I do anything else, I'm going to take a clean finger. It happens to be my pinky is the cleanest at the moment. And I'm going to just press it down, tap it down, try to get it to seal to the juncture. And then I'll work my way out from there. Um, at this point, it should be airtight. So it's gonna kind of hold its shape. I'm gonna take a little break. I'm starting to get a bunch of gunk on my hands again. It's absolutely worth taking two seconds and getting that off of there. I just wanna keep stuff as clean as possible. Okay, now instead of just leaving it like a plate on top, I'm gonna sort of hammer it down into the space between the legs on all three sides. And then I'm gonna give it a little squeeze. And just that little extra reinforcement uh, makes a huge difference in your success rate with these. They do occasionally pop open and it stinks, um, but when you push your clay to new shapes, sometimes it doesn't work out. Now, this is a thing that I worked out early on when I was doing these tripod feet and I really like it. As it is right now, they just kind of come to points. They don't feel as organic. It looks like you just folded a cylinder kit together. I like it to look a little bit like it's, um, it's a shoe or a, a, a foot at the bottom. So I take my finger and I make it into a little crook and I'm going to wet it and sort of slide along that foot. And that's going to smooth out the seam where you can see the scoring right now. And it's also going to kick these feet a little outward so it feels more stable. You don't want it to look like it's up on tiptoes and as soon as you put the flowers in there, it's going to dump over and make a mess. You want it to feel like it's kind of more grounded. So slightly damp index finger. And I'm going to come and make a crook and start right at where it joins the little pill of clay. And I'm going to swoop three, four, five times. 
And I'm just counting so that I can be consistent on all three feet. So one, two, three, four, five. And don't get your fingers super wet. You just want it to slide. You don't want there to be any clay on there. One, two, three, four, five. So they've got just a little bit of a kick. They've got kind of a flatter section and the, um, the juncture where the two sides of the cylinder got pressed together no longer looks like a bunch of um, stitches. I'm gonna take my chamois and just make sure that I haven't left anything sharp. So I'm gonna gently wrap it around and take one swipe towards the, the toe of the foot. So that should be fairly neat and tidy and have kind of an interesting finished look. There's a little bit of clay right at the points that is potentially gonna get chipped or it's a little bit sharp. Um, resist the temptation to mess with it now. Let it get leather hard and then you can just take a soft part of your hand and just gently um, soften the, round, the, the sharp edge. That's all the more it's gonna take. Um, so that could be it. You could be done there. There's a thing that I love to do that really accentuates the difference between the folded foot and the rest of the cylinder. And I do that with a metal rib. Basically, because I've got an, uh, an enclosed airspace, I'm gonna be able to press against that volume of air and it's gonna hold its shape. And you'll see what happens when I go up onto the area where the feet start. So I'm starting at the very bottom and I'm putting a little bit of pressure and I'm working my way up. And I'm letting the top of that rib kind of oscillate in and out. And look what that does. It makes this beautiful, interesting sinusoidal kind of wave uh, where the feet are meeting the rest of the cylinder. And I just love that. Um, I'm gonna take one more little pass just to kind of clean up the sides. And that's, that's that. Um, and I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. Um, I just wanna wire under it and leave it on this bat. That's why I took the time to set it up on a bat. I love to wire these off with one of my homemade uh, fishing line wire tools. I made a batch of these, and if you're interested, they are over in the music slash gallery room at the studio. You can self-serve, purchase one if you like. Um, you can also make your own. It's just a uh, fishing line twisted and plied back on itself. So it's two ply and it imparts a little texture to the pot. The trick is um, you only want the, the wheel to go around one half of a revolution as you're sliding under the pot consistently. And that'll produce a really beautiful kind of whirl underneath, which will be the top. So it's important. I'm going to get my thumbs planted so they're absolutely uh, flat onto the wheel and the wire is held taut. Then I start the wheel and just slide right underneath. And now all that needs to happen is some time to go by. Uh, these will take longer than a normal pot to dry because they're enclosed and so there's no way for the inside to dry other than through the outside. Uh, so count on these taking a little bit longer than a usual pot to arrive at leather hard. Uh, at that point, I'm going to flip it over, clean up that top edge just by sort of thumbing it or, or pressing with the thinner eminence of my hand to make sure there's nothing sharp. I'm going to go ahead and set it onto a, an even, nice, smooth board so that this can start to have, you know, a little bit of contact. Uh, three points, so it's going to stand no matter what. And then I'll let it rest even longer until it arrives at sort of hard leather hard. At which point I'm going to take a hole cutter and make a series of holes in the top to create a flower frog. Uh, if you're looking for a hole cutter online, I really recommend the Chinese clay art uh, th set of three hole cutters. They're brass and they're open on one side. So you press them in, you twist them, you pull out, the plug comes out with it and you can get rid of that plug. Just clean the tool really well between holes and do some kind of a nice um, honeycomb arrangement, something orderly. Um, maybe start right in the center and work your way out. Um, it's gonna be a feature that your eye is gonna be drawn to on this piece. So it's important to take your time and not just haphazardly pop holes into it. Uh, that's it for this one. If you have questions, you can leave a comment or you can email me and I'll be happy to try to clarify. And thanks so much for watching.